Yeah, this is a KRV. We'll get to all the specifics. I think you'll like it. This is a great knife, by the way, we're going to talk about. But first, an observation that might make the tabletop review slightly more interesting. This online world in which we live in now is mostly amazing, mostly good. Wouldn't you agree? TMP wouldn't exist without it, for sure. But there are some things about it that aren't so good. Probably not what you're going to expect, what I'll say next. For instance, have you gone into a car dealership looking for literature on a vehicle you're interested in lately? A brochure, a catalog on that truck, that car you're researching. You might be surprised to find out that they don't print many of those anymore. You guessed it. They'll say go online. <laughs> go to our website. All the information is there. And what you miss out on is something excellent like this. Awesome, emotion-inducing printed literature. That's a bad thing about our online world in which we live. People want to save money. And they go, we're not printing this anymore. It's expensive. And it is. This is probably the best catalog in the entire knife industry. I've said it before. Cold Steel. Great pictures. All the specifications. Interesting ad copy. Sometimes over the top ad copy. I've called them out on some things before. You've seen it over the years here in the TMP Knife Show. But overall, it is a visceral toilet <laughs> experience. Yeah, what's better than dropping a deuce and grabbing the Cold Steel catalog to plan, I don't know, a knife purchase? Cold Steel gets it. Lynn Thompson gets it. Hey, is it cost of money to print it? <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of money. This is not cheap to put together, and they send out thousands of these. But it's part of their brand, and I think it's smart, especially in the online world, where we just lose that tangibility. I like looking at paper. I like it. It's instant. I don't need batteries. I can do it anywhere. Yes, even on the toilet. You do it too. If not, you should. It's awesome, man. What a great catalog. It's really cool. Uh, by the way, this is a 2015 Cold Steel catalog. There's lots of cool stuff in here. It is, I honestly, I think, well, not necessarily this knife. It's just the cover I'm showing you. Uh, stay tuned. I'll give you more updates on this. <clears throat> but it's, it's honestly one of the best catalogs in the industry. It is brand enhancing and it's motivational for people to buy. I had a little accident here. I ripped out the DVDs. <laughs> Spikes went along with it. So I was surprised, by the way, how many cool Cold Steel's coming out with with 2015. I have been complaining, by the way, about other makers that like, ah, they're kind of hit and miss. Really not that many cool designs coming out. There's a few in here that I'm stoked about. And I turned the page while doing my business right here. Started reading about the knife. Obviously, you know this what this review is about. The ultimate hunter. Uh, I liked what I saw. Totally did. I was like, that knife could be really excellent. Great design, elegant, pretty lightweight for what it is. The price is in the ballpark. It's using a great carpenter steel. Um, but I wasn't sure. Sometimes you have to get a knife in hand, check it out, and I've been surprised both ways. I get the knife, I thought it was gonna be excellent, it's not, vice versa. I'm happy to say in this instance, I was more pleasantly, more pleasantly, pleasantly surprised on the Ultimate Hunter. I pretty much love this knife, and I am kind of surprised about it. Now, let's just jump into philosophy of use. It is obviously designed as a what? A hunting blade. I review a few of those here in the TMP Knife Show. Not too many. That's because you guys generally don't like them. I'm talking hunting knives. I don't know if there's not a lot of hunters in the project. They're more of a... Uh, I'm not even going to say the word. <laughs> Starts with a T. Uh, we'll say a self-defense bent. Okay, and so when I roll a hunting knife out, because it is elegantly designed, it's useful in a lot of different POUs, I don't know, it just doesn't connect with it. 
I'm not going to review this knife as a hunting knife because I think it's a lot more. But to that philosophy of use, I guess we should discuss it. It's got good belly. It's hollow ground. It could totally function in that. Skinning, caping, all the stuff we've talked about briefly in some other reviews. Maybe not so briefly. I've covered actually more than a few hunting knives at this point. Generally, like this knife, they have more applications. So obviously, it's a hunting skinny knife if you want. But here's where I say goodbye to the catalog. By, by the way, we'll see that again. Maybe. Here's where I think this knife really excels. Hardcore EDC. If you're a tradesman, a craftsman, you really need a strong knife with really good steel, won't break the bank. In other words, what I think is a fair price, you might want to put the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter on your list. It is that good. Check out my likability scale, which I will eventually add below the video when I get around to it. I, I think that's where it excels. Sometimes I'll go on my playlist and I, I'm looking at the the breadth of knives that I've reviewed and I like to, I really like to have a broad expanse. So I have lightweight ADCs, really inexpensive ADCs. I'll have high end carry knives. I'm really stoked to put a hardcore folding knife in it. And this is a hardcore folding knife, I think, from what I know about it and my own testing. I'll call it HD EDC, more acronyms, heavy duty EDC. I'm not gonna say defensive knife. I'm not saying the T word, by the way, in this video. Sorry, not doing it. Uh, it. It could function in that, any knife could. I just don't think it's super suited for it. Size, weight, and feel. Uh, it's kind of a, a bigger knife in its presentation. And yet, in the hand, by the way, it doesn't feel that way. It feels medium-sized. Three and a half inch blade. The overall weight is a very, for what I think, a super strong knife, a lightweight five ounces. Yeah, four ounces, I, I still t stick to that. I get super excited if it goes under four ounces. But we're going to look at what we get in this knife. And in the Ultimate Hunter, uh, and you won't read this in the catalog, but I think it's all about giving you a super strong blade. And Lynn Thompson and Andrew Demko put this knife together, if, if the catalog is correct, that's what it says. And they did a great job, and it seems like everything is about the blade. Giving you a super strong and capable blade, and then doing some really smart design choices to get it down to 5 ounces. Does that make sense? For instance, the blade is pretty thick. It's 3.5 millimeters thick. It's hollow ground on this portion. You can see the belly. We talked about the hunting stuff, so it's kind of a, a drop point. Comes out of the box really sharp, by the way. Strong tip. It's a strong blade. I like they went hollow grind on this, by the way, because it saves a little bit of weight. If it was FFG, this would be kind of a chunky knife, I think. Okay, the steel. I've been talking about it a lot lately in some vids. I have started testing it. Eh, I won't say super hard, but some. The Carpenter XHP, fine grain, powdered metal technology, even distribution of carbides. Look it up if you want to know more. I like it so far. It seems like a great steel. Nice finish on it, by the way. It's kind of a polished finish, not a stone washed. On this version, subject to change. Cold Steel will change it up. They may do a stone wash. They may do a black inversion. Hollow grinding once again. Drop point. I love how they do this. I mean, I'm going to give them like one and a half points more on their likability scale because Cold Steel is so excellent about adding removable thumb studs. End of rant. I just love that because it opens up this whole space. I'm talking the flat right portion right here prior, prior to the primary grind. To a consistent angle sharpener, stuff I've said a lot. In hand, and we'll talk about the handle specifically, it has enough real estate and it just feels light in hand. It feels like it's lighter than five ounces. It really does. And when I pick up a larger knife, and I, wouldn't, I don't know if this really categorizes itself as a larger knife. I've got a Voyager new version sitting off in the back. Let's just, actually, let's compare this just for the heck of it. See, this is a large Voyager, not an XL, and you can see it's it's smaller. 
But the pen, I want to call it the Pendleton. I'm sorry, the Ultimate Hunter feels smaller in hand than it really is. It's, I don't know, a, a large to medium sized knife, depending on your point of view. How about speed? Well, before I talk about speed, I'm going to talk about strength. And this is why I'm classifying it, classifying it of course, as an HD EDC. <laughs> Heavy duty, everyday carry knife. The Triad Lock, bro. Uh, I've talked a lot about it. Uh, I've turned a lot of people onto it. I've tested it thoroughly. I just love it. Look at the big old stop pin in here, by the way. All the shock is not transmitted to the lock bar. Nope. And it can take some heavy abuse. This is as close as you can find to a fixed blade that I've seen. And Spyderco is coming out with their version to compete with this. Good on them, man. It's great to have options. I'm glad Spidey's doing that. Really glad, actually. Uh, so super strong knife. Triad, it's, it's kind of proven to this point, And I'm glad to have gotten the word out to some small degree through the TMP Knife Show. Speed is excellent. I can't fault it at all. Now, you see me, I'm always a conv conventional deployer. Just a thumb stud. A little flick of the wrist. You could do a pinch deployment on it. Like that. That was kind of a slow one. But you get it. You get tricky. Some guys get really super tricky. But I, I think it's a perfect on the speed. It really is. Especially for what could be categorized as a lockback. Okay. How about this? Any movement? No. We wouldn't expect any really. Right? Blade centering, super excellent. Look at that, really cool. Now I'm gonna get a little bit excited on you, okay? This is where it kind of takes it over the top for me. I've talked a lot about when manufacturers kind of get carried away in the marketing of a knife by making it stronger. I don't think that strength is oftentimes needed in a folding knife. I think it's just additional weight that serves no purpose. I've been very clear, very consistent about that here in TMP for a long time. Do you see any steel liners in this knife? Hmm? Oops, strobe mode. Nope. It is perfectly milled, I'll say semi-perfectly milled G10 with no steel liners. Not even nested variety. Well done. Andrew Demko, Lynn Thompson, Cold Steel. I don't think this knife is down at all in torsional rigidity, in strength, at all. Hey, but if I stick this into a sewer pipe and, like, wrench it, it's going to snap in half. Well, maybe. Tip from TMP, stay away from sewer pipes. <laughs> if you got to pry into one, you might want to reevaluate your life decisions. There you go. Little tip from your Uncle Nut and Fancy. No charge. Just like this video. Well done on the handle, though. Ergonomically, it has enough length to it. Conventional, reverse grip. Oh, so excellent. Lanyard hole if you need it. It does have a backspacer there. I think that's aluminum. I didn't really scratch it, but I think it is. Not as I tell. Ergonomics are excellent. I'm not going to say the J word, either. You can kind of see right there. Not in this review. In other ones, I will. I'll just resume. Uh, I said, you know, not a defensive knife. It's just because I don't feel like it has an overage of traction. We'll put it that way. Clip. Two will come uh, with it. So oriented for right-hand carry, left-hand carry. I think this is a good ambidextrous knife, too. You can see the thumb studs have no volcano issues. And it's reversible, too. So if I'm a lefty, I would just unscrew it, put this longer thumb stud on that side. Carries pretty deep. You'll have some exposed. It is a polished clip. I usually like blackened or bead blasted clips. Low profile. Really strong attachment. Mini Torx construction. The knife is put together well. Durability is going to be phenomenal. We've come to expect that, right? From the Cold Steel products. I have. From some heavy use, actually, at this point. From all the testing I've done on them. Value. Well, I think retail is around 150, but you'll score it at the top of the screen there for a lot less. Maybe around 105, maybe less. Don't hold me to a price. Competitive options. What could you get for the money? Well, let's remember where I'm putting this knife. Heavy duty, everyday carry knife is really where it's at. It is kind of a larger blade. I've said before, I like the smaller blades for utility tasks. 
but in food preparation, which by the way, I don't think this knife would excel at because it's kind of thick. I don't know if it's the ultimate slicer. It did great with cardboard tests where somewhere along the way, I'll show it to you. Really good actually. It sliced well and it seemed to hold an edge pretty good. Now that I am thinking about it, let's just test it. I have not touched this up after the cardboard test. This is XHP steel, let's see what it does. It might hang up, I don't know. I haven't even tried it. Oh, dudes. Nice. Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised on that because usually when I stump a blade with cardboard, including S30V, which I said before, 154, um, it'll hang up. It just needs to be touched up, you know. It doesn't ruin the edge. So I, I'll classify that as a really good edge. But don't think I like, you know, put this under months and months of hard use. I didn't. Just a you know snapshot in time. Competitive options we're talking about though. If we took that uh, detour. I would say the code four, right here, bro. That's a cold steel product, and I don't, I don't really mean to be trumping cold steel all the time, but uh, there's not a lot of locks as strong as this one, and there's not a lot of knives that come at this price, this thin, this light, this fast. Cold, cold steel code four. It, it competes nice. Uh, which one would I choose between these? Oh gosh, I know you guys ask me this stuff. Uh, probably the code four. There you go. There's an the answer. But if I throw the Voyager in the mix, that's a that's a hard question. All three of these knives are excellent, uh, and they have a variety of blade shapes. Some serrated, some not. And I don't have a ton more on the table, not right now. But you could throw in the mix Recon One, the Voyager, the AK-47, American Lawman series, and some Benchmade products and Spiderco stuff too. You know. There's other knives out there. This knife isn't as strong as these, though. It just isn't. Size-wise, it competes. You know, depending on your point of view, would you classify a... This is a hard-to-use tactical folder. Oh, I said the T-word. <sighs> Crap. I meant not to say it. I don't know. It just pins, though. Um, I, I'm really surprised how much I like the Ultimate Hunter, though. I think it is a very intriguing knife. For the price, I think it is excellent actually especially since you're getting a very premium cts xhp steel which by the way is being integrated into a lot of different cold steel knives and good on them this by the way is from the cardboard testing all the you know messed up portions so. so even if you don't get it grab your freaking catalog dude drop that deuce do some quality reading and enjoy knives old school style tmp see ya